we're heading back down to the car graveyard to sort the Astra out. Thanks to all of you who submitted a guess or a suggestion of what the fault was. I've got to admit, there's a lot of you out there who have got some really good technical knowledge. I'm going to put the diagnostic box on it first. I'm just going to try and confirm exactly what the problem is. And then we'll take it from there and I'll tell you what the answer is, what the fault is, what's causing the engine not to start. And here's another thing as well. I'm going to show you a car that's related to the Westminster Bridge terror attacks. There's a car in the car graveyard that's got a link to that. Some of you mentioned this car in the comment section on the last video, on the car graveyard video. So I want to do a little bit about that as well and tell you the story behind it. It's cost me a lot of money over the years. So let's get back over there. I've ordered a part. So I'm going to go and do a little bit of work over there because it's going to take me back to my military days. I'm going to have to do the work outdoors on the grass. It's not going to be an easy job, but it is a quick job. And normally if it's in the workshop, it would be an easy job. So it's a little bit frustrating. I've got to do it outdoors. But hey ho, that is the case. Let's get over there. Let's get it done. Let's find out what the fault was. And let's see when we do it, if we fixed it. Because you know what? Sometimes when you're doing cars, you fix what you think's wrong and it still doesn't start. We'll see. So I'm back over in the Astra now, as you can see. And uh, what I've already done is I've opened the bonnet, put the jump pack on. There we go, we've got some power into the car. What I was saying to you, this isn't an educational channel, but just for those of you who don't know a lot about sort of mechanics, we need three things to get this going. So we need a source of power. We've got the battery, haven't we? But the battery's flat, so we've put the jump pack on. So now we've got power. That will turn the starter motor and we heard that last time it was turning it over but there was no start and we need two other things now don't we we need a source of air so the engine will suck in the air you've got induction compression power and exhaust or to the layman suck squeeze bang blow it's never normally the air that is the issue only once in my life have i ever come across an issue where it was the air and that was back in my army days when we had a truck the cab was tilted forward and when the squaddy took the cab back, some hessian from the camouflage got trapped between the air intake and when he tried to turn it over he hadn't realised he'd trapped the hessian and it wouldn't start. So as a mechanic I went down, you go for your, your protocol as he got power, is it getting air and then you go onto the fuel system don't you. So the third thing is the fuel system. Has it got fuel going to the engine and has it got spark to, to ignite that fuel on the petrol engine. So that's where we're at now isn't it. We need to make sure we've got fuel going to the engine and we've got spark as well. So let's get on with seeing what we can do here. I've connected the OBD port and on the Astra, it's underneath the, the handbrake, but I've just connected up the jump pack. So let's just see again if it will start. Yeah, there's no point continuing that. There's nothing going on there. I'm gonna connect the diagnostic pack. go there we go let's do a scan and see what fault codes we get uh, voxel ah so they're always called opal on these aren't they yeah they're opal voxel and we go down to 59 2009 loading database let's get it to find it there we go okay code scan ignition on and continue let's see what it comes up with That's interesting. Crankshaft sensor circuit, incorrect signal. Did you put down crankshaft sensor in the comments of the last video? Mm. I was not expecting it to be that, to be honest. Give yourself a round of applause. So I've got to do this job outside and I've got to do it on grassed area. And it's a little bit wet as well, but I'm over 
at the old graveyard and the bonus is the guy who owns the place also owns um, like a firewood business as well so there's bits of wood we can use to stick the jack on and the axle stands on so we should be okay yeah some proper bits of wood over here so that's good so that's just a bit of a bonus for us you can obviously hear someone's doing some work over there as well sounds like some metal work so well they're chopping some wood themselves but uh, no it's definitely metal work making the right noise so I haven't got the crank sensor yet I've ordered it from Euro Car Parts I'm going to drop it off at the local quick fit I'll probably pick up a new battery whilst I'm over there but I might as well get the car up and get the sensor out it's a bit of a pain doing it over here there is a bit hard standing if I move that but the problem is is I'll be blocking the road and you can bet your bottom dollar someone will turn up as soon as I block that bit of road so let's get this up in the air Okie dokie, we have the new crankshaft sensor, there it is, let's get it out, and that is all it is. Well that's a bit disappointing, I did try and film underneath the vehicle but it didn't come out too good so I've not got any great footage from underneath there and to be honest as well um, it was a bit of a health and safety nightmare it's probably not worth putting on here kids do not do what I did and try and fix a car whilst the axle stands are balanced on a bit of wood on grass it's a recipe for disaster but just so you know so I'm a little bit gutted, I haven't got some great footage, but when I get it back to the unit and when I get it up on some ramps, I'll get some proper footage underneath and show you the crank sensor removal. It is wedged in there though. But that Audi over there, that's one that a couple of people asked me about in the comment section of the car graveyard video. And it's got a, a, a well, so I say an interesting story, a bit of a nightmare story behind it. And uh, if you Google Westminster terror fraud, you'll see a girl called Alicia and her partner, Justin. Um, they and a guy called Connor Billings, who lives over in Limited Spa, they um, went around dealerships getting V5 dock ref numbers. And if you look on my channel for the V5 dock ref fraud, that's where that video came from. Um, and they took the dock ref numbers and registered V5s in their name online. Now, they went to Loans to Go, a Moody Logbook Loan Company, Car Logbook Loan Company, and took out up to about, I think, £80,000 worth of loans on car dealers cars and that happened to be one that it was done on um, and I've sold the car I'd only had it two weeks and a customer really liked it it's got cloth seats so I thought it might hang around a bit longer than it actually did but it's a real nice car um, as you can see uh, and th this they, they obviously took a lot put loan out on that car as well but how they did it without the car being there I've no idea and loans to go didn't really want to sort of assist in that they they sort of said no no the car doesn't need to be there which oh, I'm pretty sure that is bang out of all that i'm pretty sure you have to have a, a vehicle present when you do a logbook loan i don't know I don't, i've never taken one out but i would assume so um and they would put 80 grand's worth of cars on there so i reckon someone must have been working at one of these loans to go in conjunction with these guys i don't know that's my speculation that's my guess but anyway these guys were scumbags they've sort of took you know um, the westminster terror fraud they set up a just giving page for it and um, they took out benefit uh, loans etc or benefit fraud that look they, they if you just google these people they're 
um, their whole life has just been fraud and have moved around the country doing this sort of stuff. And I was unfortunate enough to have this vehicle. Uh, um, but look, it's one of those things, it's happened, it's hung around and the V5 is uh, still in their name and the DVLA won't give me a V5. They keep saying, I need to prove it's my car and I've sent them in the auction receipt. I've sent them in absolutely everything else under the sun, but they're just being moody. They, they won't issue me a V5. Um, the police know about this car. Um, it's one of those ones that is just going to hang around for every uh, it has hung around forever the only way I'm really going to get any money out of it is by taking them to court and suing them um, again that's a long drawn out process it's something I should do and I will do and it's something that I'm probably going to have to take up with the loans to go people they really didn't help when they needed my help uh, I obviously gave them my help but when I wanted their help they didn't want to know oh data protection this data protection that absolutely scum company um, with scum people uh, you know working for them but look that's happened and that's the story behind that car so that's in the car graveyard it's probably going to sit here again for god knows how long it's losing money like no tomorrow but there's not a lot i can do i've tried and you can only invest so many hours in sorting these things out before you have to move on and and crack on with other things um is it one i strip for parts yeah possibly is it one that eventually i'll get a v5 for and sell it yeah possibly is it one we use as a company car again yeah possibly there's there's something there that will happen it's not going to happen today it's not happened in the last year it's just one of those cars that is going to hang about um hopefully you've never had a story like that but in the car game these things can happen so again it's it's just stuff that you learn over the years well that's frustrating the astra has beat me for today we know it's the crank shaft sensor but doing it over while i'm doing it on grass with an axle stand balanced on a piece of wood with no one else around should something go wrong it's just too risky there's no way, there's no way I'm going to continue doing that over there like that. It's wedged right in, it's stuck in. I need it back at the workshop. I've got to get it on some ramps and I've got to get the proper tools on it. It took me back to my army days, that, working outdoors, working in fields, trying to get stuff done. But it's just reminding me how difficult it can really be. Trying to fix things when you haven't got the right tools to hand. I've got a bit, you know, bits of dust in my eyes. I didn't have any safety specs on. I haven't got the right tools, I can't get the vehicle high enough in the air so I can't get any purchase on it to, to pop it out. I've got an O-ring on them and because it gets so hot down there, these things are just, you know, I mean, they're, not, they're not really meant to be pulled in and out, are they? So they're there for life and so, or until they go wrong and obviously it's gone wrong and now I can't get it out. Um, so I need it in the workshop, I've got to get it onto some ramps. It's a 15 minute, 30 minute job but it's in the workshop. Believe it if it's stuck in, it shouldn't take much longer. But when you're trying to do it outdoors, you just you just don't have the kit. I've been I've been to and through the workshop twice already, and it's just taken too long. And it's well and truly seized in there. I've got to get it back onto a set of ramps so I can get under it properly, and, and be confident to be under there because I don't want to risk one life just for the sake of a YouTube video. Um, so the Astra survives another day. It wants to make a third video, doesn't it? It probably want to make fourth and a fifth as well, I reckon, because I looked at those brake discs, they're absolutely rusted up. There's a, every chance they're warped or they're no good. They might clean off when we drive it, but I don't think so. So the Astra lives to fight another day, wants to make another YouTube video, and I'm sure it's going to. At least we know, or we think we know, it's the crankshaft sensor. I'm going to get it recovered back to the unit. It's not going to happen today. What I'll probably do is tag it onto one of the daily delivery jobs once the recovery truck comes back, ask it to go and pick it up and bring it down. And then we've got the tools in the workshop and we've got to set around so we get the job done properly. But until then, I hope you enjoy these videos. I hope you like the new style. I hope you like watching me struggle uh, and having an absolute nightmare. Um, if you do, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't already. It's free of charge after all. And it gives me so much motivation to do so many more videos for you. And I'll tell you what I nearly forgot to do. I forgot to leave you a question for you to answer in the comment section below. So, during the lockdown, are you getting fatter or fitter? I know in my case, it's definitely fatter. Uh, <laughs> I'm obviously eating too much, doing too little, and I like a beer on a Friday and Saturday night. And now the gyms is shut, I literally can't be bothered to do anything at home. My missus, on the other hand, um, has turned the house into a home gym, so I don't really have an excuse, but look, I just can't motivate myself to do it. Tell me in the comment section below. Are you getting fatter or are you getting fitter? And there will be another video out in a couple of days' time.